Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This past week a game I've been wanting to play has finally come out. My Friendly Neighborhood is a survival horror FPS that takes influence from the early Resident Evil games, with a twisted cast of Muppet-like characters. When I first saw the trailer for this game, I was immediately drawn in by its take on the whole evil puppet vibe, and I was interested to see how this game was going to differ from Poppy's Playtime or Five Nights at Freddy's. And after finally getting a chance to play through this game, I can pleasantly say that all of my expectations were met with a polished and carefully thought out experience. This game is developed by two brothers who obviously have a passion for creating an experience made for the fans of Resident Evil and Bioshock. The use of themed, interconnected level design sets up the eerie atmosphere incredibly well. And throughout the game there will be these well thought out and interesting puzzles, and not to mention the variety of weapons that are extremely well done. It's easy to understand what makes those games great because these elements are highlighted so well here. My Friendly Neighborhood starts off with some channel surfing showing us what's currently being passed off as accessible television. That is until suddenly a show is interrupted by a children's show. We then cut to our main protagonist, Gordon, a repairman set in to shut down the televised program that's being broadcasted across the network. Tasked with figuring out what is causing the signal to be broadcasted in the first place, we're also tasked with shutting down the show and killing the feed from the broadcasting antenna. A lot of themed locations can be seen on the production lot as we make our way into the main tower, and then we notice that it's almost like somebody was expecting us. Upon ringing the bell at the front desk, a sock puppet by the name of Ricky appears right in front of us. And right away we know we're in for quite a ride. Ricky has a way about him. He comes off as a lovable yet unnerving character, who delivers each line as if in front of children. This goes for nearly every character we come across throughout the game. Each have a threatening aura around them, but similar to Sesame Street characters, they are mostly misunderstood. But that's not to say that you won't hear the occasional murderous intent around you as you make your way through the production lot. The quality of the writing manages to reflect really well into the gameplay too. With notable references from point and click adventure games I used to play as a kid to immediately shifting the gameplay to how most first person shooters work today. A lot of subtlety goes into the gunplay as well, with your first discoverable weapon being an iconic wrench almost straight out of Bioshock. Something worth noting is actually that the weapons you find lying around the production set aren't really meant to be lethal. Because the set is based off of a children's show, all of the weapons featured in the game utilize a Rolodex using all 26 letters of the alphabet. Along with being non-lethal, we have to resort to using duct tape to keep more threatening characters from ever being able to bother us again. The comically large letters being thrown around the room as you take down enemies is a really fun way of showing the visceral nature of the weapons we get to use. Another similarity to Resident Evil is using the inventory management system from the fourth game, and placing items within your labeled briefcase as you traverse through each room. Occasionally you'll come across a save room that also takes inspiration straight out of Resident Evil as well. With a save system very close to how the Ink Ribbons would act within the original game, except this time we're using tokens that we find around the map. My Friendly Neighborhood doesn't do much handholding. In fact, you'll actually need to find a map to help you search through each location. Puzzles, secrets, and items are all scattered across every location. And just like most survival horror games, each location will have you eventually backtracking through it just to obtain a key item for the current objective. I found this to be extremely fun because areas that weren't highly populated would suddenly become harder to traverse and even making some areas more expansive as we progress through the story. The interconnected feeling of each location having a doorway or elevator to easily access later on felt earned and always rewarding. Each location had an interesting character from the neighborhood that I would say stood out among the rest. Investing time to explore and fully search through each room would reward you later on when you'd come across these characters. These characters have a unique and interesting character design that leads into discovering more about their true intentions. Overall, if you enjoy any of the games I've mentioned in this review, then I would say without a doubt you'll enjoy My Friendly Neighborhood. It plays lightly on the horror side and plays more to the theatrics of being on a children's show, but the lengths some would go to feel like they belong to this world is definitely driven home. I had a great time playing through this game, and it made me wish that more games told stories within their limits more often like this one. It definitely wears its heart on its sleeve for sure, and the sense of mystery and tension are all present throughout the entire experience. With amazing performances ranging across several characters and a really fun take on the whole murderous puppet vibe, I'd say My Friendly Neighborhood is well worth your time. Anyways, I have a few more achievements I want to go grab, so I'm going to go start my next playthrough. My name is Zen, and I hope to see you in the next one. See ya.